Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, welcome to another video of C++ for beginners. And before we start this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel and also click that bell icon so that you are notified when I publish my next video because on this channel I'm teaching you how you can become an excellent programmer and that's what you want. You really want to build great applications and have a good job and a lot more benefits that come with being good in this job. So. Without further ado, let's see what we are going to do in this video. Today I want to talk about while loop and I have already made one video on this topic and if you haven't watched that, I'm going to link it here, so make sure to do so. And why I'm making this video, because I really believe that watching one video and doing only one example is not going to be enough for you to really master a certain concept. It wasn't for me, it is not going to be for you as well and that is completely okay. So we are going to show you how this while loop is used on one more example. And the program that I want to build today is going to be a program that has to count how many digits the number contains. So our user is going to enter a number and then we are going to write a program that is going to count how many digits there are in that number. So let me copy the text of that program like this. And it says count digits of a number. So let's do the first thing that we know that we have to do and that we know how to do as well. So that is going to be write out a message to our user so that he enters that number and then also allow him to enter that number. So I'm going to say C out and then I'm going to say number like this. And then I'm going to allow my user to enter that number. Before I can enter it, I have to really declare a variable that is going to hold that number. So here I'm going to say int number like this. And then here, after we have written out this message to our user, we are going to say C in number like this. So after our user has entered his number, we really have stored it in our number variable and now we are going to write out the program that is going to count the number of digits of this number here. So let's first see one specific situation that can happen and that is going to be when our user enters number zero. So this number holds a value of zero and in that situation I'm just going to write out a condition. So I'm going to say if my number like this is equal to zero. In that situation, situation, please just write out a message to my user like this. You have entered zero. Okay, like this. And I don't need semicolon here. This looks better. So this here is a situation where our user has entered number zero. And in that case, we just want to write out that he has entered zero. And now we are left with the main problem of this task, and that is to count the digits of the number that our user has entered. And that part I'm going to put in my else block, like this. And if you are not familiar with if else statements, make sure to watch that video. It's going to be linked here. So here in this else block, I want to write the program that is going to count the digits of a number, which is not zero definitely, because if we come here, then our number is definitely not zero. So how we are going to do that? Well, let me show you the algorithm on an example. Let's say that our user is going to enter a number 1325, for example. That is the number that our user enters. So how we are going to count the digits of this number? Well, first we are going to have a variable that is going to be called counter, like this. And initially we are going to set the value of that counter to zero. So that is initial count of our digits of number. And then we are going to, to use while loop to iterate through all the digits of this number. And in each iteration we are going to do following. So we are going to come here and then we are going to say, okay, take this last digit of my number and really remove it, I don't need it, and as well increase the number that my counter is holding. So increase the number of digits because we have removed one digit. And then in the next iteration we are coming here 
and we are as well saying, okay, so take that last digit and increase my counter like this. And then in the next iteration, take the last digit, increase counter, and in the next as well, take last digit, increase counter, and then when we come next time, we really have nothing more to count. So there are no more digits left. Our number at this situation here is going to be equal to zero. And then we are going to know that there is nothing else to count. And then we are really going to leave our while loop and we are going to write out the value that our counter variable is holding, which is at this situation four. So let me show you how we, how we can do that in our code. So I'm going to delete this part here we don't need it anymore. And then here I'm going to write out the following. So as we explained already, first thing that we need to do is we need to create a variable that is going to be called counter, like this, or digits counter, however you prefer. And that variable I'm going to assign a value of zero initially. And after we have created this variable here, now we need our while loop. So while like this, and then inside these parentheses here, we really write out a condition that our while loop is going to check each time that it wants to run, each time that it wants to iterate. And that condition here is really going to be, please check whether my number is greater than zero. Okay, so in any case where our number is greater than zero, our while loop is going to execute this block of code that I put inside these parentheses. And what we are going to put inside these parentheses, well, as we already explained previously, first thing that we need to do is we need to say number is equal to number divided by 10. And what this line of code is going to do? Well, let me show you that on an example. Let's say that our number, so our, our number holds the value of 1, 2, 3 like this. And this line here really says the following. It says, please do this expression here. So calculate it. And whatever this expression here results in, assign that to my number variable. And 1, 2, 3, so 123 3 divided by 10, because this here is whole number, so it's integer, and this here is whole number as well. The result is going to be whole number, and that is going to be 12 or 12.3, but, but because the result has to be the whole number, that 0.3 part is just deleted, bye-bye. So then this 12 in this situation is going to be assigned to our number variable. Okay, so that means that this number divided by 10 is really going to take away that last digit, which we have previously explained. So I'm going to delete this part here. Okay, and this line of code, there is really one more way to write this. So write the same thing. So I'm going to comment this here and I'm going to write out number divided equal, so number r like this, 10. Okay, so this line of code here and this line of code here are exactly the same. This is just a shorter way to write this here. And this looks prettier to me, but you can leave whichever of these two you prefer. Okay, so after we have taken the last digit from our number, what we are left to do is to increase our counter variable by one. So we can do that using our increment operator here. So this part of code has really, in each iteration, taken away one digit and then increased counter variable. So what we should do now after our while loop finishes we should really write out how many number, how many digits our number contained. So we are going to write out count number contains like this, and then let's write out the value that our counter variable is holding like this. What is this? Oh, it says count instead of C out. Okay. And then Let's write out just digits like this. Okay, so our number contains whatever our counter variable is holding digits. 
So now I can really run my program and let's do that. So it asks us to enter a number. Let's enter number one, two, three, for example. And it says that our number contains three digits, which is correct. So let's very quickly explain one more time how this has happened. So I'm going to stop my program and I'm going to say here that our user has entered number, let's say one, two, three. So our program in this situation comes here to our while loop and it says, please check whether the number that our user has entered is greater than zero. And that number is one, two, three, so 123, which is greater than zero. So then our program can really start executing this while loop. So it enters here and then it comes to the first line of this while loop and it says, please do this expression here. And this expression here really just takes the last digit of our number away. And that is going to be three. So we are going to take that away. And then the next thing that needs to happen is increase the value of our counter. Since previously the value of our counter was zero, now the value is going to be increased by one. So that is going to be one. And after that, our program comes here. And because of the nature of the while loop, it goes back here. It checks again whether our number is greater than zero. Our number is 12 now. So the one digit has been taken away. So that is still greater than zero. So then our number really comes here and then does, does this line of code again. So it says again, please take away one digit from my number. So then it takes away this two part. And then it comes here. It says now increase my counter because you have taken away one digit and that is going to be two now. After that, our program comes here and then goes back here, checks whether our number, so whether our one is greater than zero, it says yes. And then it comes here and it says, please divide my number by 10. So take away that one digit. So that one digit is taken away and we are left with zero. And then our counter is increased by one. And then we are really going to come here again and then our program goes back and says, please check whether my number, so whether zero is greater than zero. And then our program says, no, it is not. So our while loop is not executed anymore. And then it comes here instead. And it writes out that our number contains three digits. And there is one more situation that I want to show you. And that is going to be what is going to happen in a situation where our user decides to enter a negative number. So let's run our program and let's see how our program is going to behave in that situation. So now I'm going to enter a number of minus 335, for example. And you see that our program writes out that our number contains zero digits. Why has that happened? Because our program has come here. So it has increased our counter it has actually assigned our counter a value of zero and then it has come here and it is it has really tried to check whether our number is greater than zero but because our number is minus 335 that is not greater than zero so our program then really is not going to execute this block here but it's just going to go here directly so then it's going to write out that our number contains and the value that it has assigned to our counter here which is zero so our number contains zero digits and that's the message that you see here. So that is the explanation of this behavior and we need to solve that now. How we are going to solve that? Well, it's pretty simple. So here, when we come to this else block, in this situation, in this 14th line of code, we are really sure that our number is not equal to zero because we have checked that here. But here we really don't know whether our number is less than zero or greater than, than zero. So here we really have to check whether our number is less than zero. And if it is, we really need to get the absolute value of our number, which means if it is negative, we have to convert it to the positive number. So here I'm going to write out the following condi condition. So I'm going to say, please check if my number is less than zero like this. And then if this here results as true, I'm going to write out here a way for my program to convert this number in case that it is negative into a positive number. And how we can do that? Well, we can really multiply that number by minus one. So we can say number 
is equal to minus one times number like this okay so now if I run my program and if I enter value of minus two three six for example our program now writes out that our number contains three three digits which is correct so how has this happened our program has come here it has really checked that our number is less than zero and then it has come here and it has said please do this expression here and then assign that to my number so minus one times two minus two three six those minuses are going to really convert into plus sign and then one times 236 is going to be 236 and after that we are going to do the same logic here so we are going to write out that our program that our number contains three digits which is correct answer okay so that is the one situation that I wanted to explain and there is also another situation that I want to explain to you and that is what is going to happen in the following situation here so let's see let me enter a number that is very 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 large I, I cannot even read this number here so how our program is going to behave in that in this situation here write it in the comments down below please before I execute this here and now if I press enter what is going to happen well our program has glitched a little bit and after that it has written out that our number contains 10 digits but this is definitely more than 10 why has this happened if you are not familiar with data types and overflow and concept concepts that I have already talked about in one of my videos I am going to link that video here so make sure to watch the video and now I am very quickly going to explain what has happened here but make sure to watch that video so when we have entered this number here let me stop this program and let me put let's say let me put a breakpoint here and now I'm going to run my program and what this breakpoint is going to do it's really going to stop the execution of my program at this line here and we haven't talked about breakpoints or debugging programs previously but if you want me to include that in one of my next videos make sure to write that in the comments down below because I really believe that it is important for you to see how your program is executed line by line so to be able to follow it and in that way you can really discover any bugs and any situations that are tricky and that are happening inside your program so you can see and control that better so I have put here a breakpoint and let's now enter a number that is going to be a very large number okay so if I press enter now you see that my program has really stopped the execution here on this line here so after I have entered my number and then even though I have entered a number that is pretty large let's hover over this number variable you can see that it is holding a value of two billion and one hundred and forty seven million and something so this value here is definitely not equal to this value here but because our program has really gotten the value that is much larger than the maximum value that our int variable can hold it has really assigned the maximum amount that our int can hold to our number variable so that is what has happened in this program and if I click continue now you can see that our program writes out that our number contains 10 digits because it really was holding a 10 digit number so that is the maximum amount that our int type can hold okay so that is the last situation that I wanted to explain to you and I hope that you like this video and if you have learned something new make sure to subscribe to my channel share it with all your friends anyone who would like to learn programming thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in my next video bye